remember that time that uh, Joshua got accused of committing genocide because as Israel enters the uh, promised land of Cana, uh, they are told to slaughter everyone, man, not just the men, but the women and the children too. Even the, the animals are, are taken down by sword. Uh, Joshua chapter 6 verse 21 reads, they devoted all in the city to destruction, both men and women, young and old, oxen, sheep, and donkeys with the edge of the sword. And it is hard to justify in light of a New Testament God who says, turn the other cheek, who says, uh, if your enemy uh, demands your, your cloak, give him your tunic too, who, who talks about forgiveness uh, and who calls the little children to his side and not to the sword. Uh, I think context maybe matters just a little bit here uh, because we don't have two gods, but we do have two different moments in time. Uh, first being uh, a world where it wasn't sort of a hostile takeover of one land, but it was a whole bunch of tribes utterly trying to annihilate each other. That this was war um, and nobody's happy about it. Nobody calls it good uh, and nobody's thrilled with it. Even the faithful in Israel are uncomfortable with what's going on here uh, because the Canaanites are practicing awful atrocities of their own and trying to wipe Israel to the woman and child and even animal off the face of the map. Uh, what God does, though, is insist that nobody profit from this. Nobody takes slaves or treasure from this. Uh, nobody make their lives better at the expense of somebody else. But rather, he has promised a, a nation, a place, a people, to survive even into the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting and simply will not let anybody come between it. It is not that God chooses some and wants to damn others, but it's that he recognizes that awful unbelief festers and, and spreads. And so where there was faith, where there was uh, belief, even among the Canaanites, namely Rahab, they are called out of Cana and they, they join Israel in the promised land. Uh, it, it's not good. It's not something that anybody celebrates. And it's something that is so marked by sin that our Lord doesn't simply justify it by saying he is in charge, so deal with it. But he actually goes into the world himself to bear the sword. He enters creation himself to reckon with war and bloodshed and violence uh, from his people and from unbelievers both, but he does not choose sides. He bears sins. Jesus is confronted by the government and he is cut down utterly. He is crucified for the Canaanites and for Israel, for all of the world. And he rises so that all who believe in him can have hope of something more than building a more peaceful world. Although I'm all the way on board with it, you should be too. We are actually called to love even our enemies. But when it comes time to, to take up arms, we go not in the understanding that our side is right, not in the understanding that God is, is surely on our side, but that God calls the faithful out of death and unto life again. And that's what we cling to. And so in a world where there are awful people who would see you utterly destroyed, it, it stops being about winning and losing. And it starts being about God being faithful to his promises and not allowing anything to give you over to death. It is a, a painful physical reality of that which happens spiritually every day, though. You are called out of death. You are called out of unbelief. You are called into a new life with Christ where death has been defeated. So... There we rejoice.